Continuity of functions is a very subtle notion. It is possible to construct functions which are continuous at all irrational points and discontinuous at rational points. This, in my view, defies intuition a little bit. So, so the, there is much more into con continuity than what is obvious from the outset. Hello everybody, this is Mika Seppele. In this presentation I will now discuss properties of continuous functions. I will not go into such deep things as what I mentioned a moment ago, but I will discuss two of the main properties that we need to know. Continuous functions have two important properties which are illustrated in these two pictures below. A function which is a continuous on a closed interval from A to B attains its uh, largest value and its smallest value on that interval. This is important to know for applications because if we know that a model for revenues, for example, is a continuous function, then we may try to adjust the parameters so that the revenue is as high as possible. The second picture relates to the intermediate value theorem. It says that uh, a continuous function takes any value between any two of its values. Let us start by recalling that a function f is continuous at the point x equals x0 if the limit of f of x as x approaches x0 exists and is the value of the function at that particular point. If f is not continuous at x0 then it is said to be discontinuous. Here is a graph of a function which is discontinuous at the point where its values jump. Otherwise, this function is continuous. We say that a function f is left continuous at x equals x0 if the limit as x approaches x0 through numbers smaller than x0 of f of x exists and equals the value of the function at that point. So this graph here again shows a function which is left continuous everywhere and especially on the point where its values jump. Likewise, we say that a function is right continuous at x equals x0 if the limit as x approaches x0 through numbers larger than x0 of f of x exists and equals the value of the function at that point. Here, this picture shows uh, the same function that we have seen already before. This is not right continuous at the point where its values jump because then we approach that point x0 from the right and the values of the function uh, do have a limit but that limit is larger than the actual value of the function f at this point x0 that is at the point where the values of the function f jump. A function f is said to be continuous on an open interval if it is continuous at each point of the interval. And uh, a function f is continuous on the closed interval from A to B if it is continuous on the open interval from A to B and left continuous at B and right continuous at A. This definition of continuity is uh, rather loaded. It is possible to find functions which are continuous at all irrational points and discontinuous at all rational points. Hence, one may wonder what the continuity really means. For our purposes, the following functions are continuous when they take finite values, all polynomials, all rational functions, that is, quotients of polynomials, and the inverse functions of the above functions. Further, all power functions are continuous functions of the form x to the power r, where r is the real number. Then these functions 
generally are defined only if x is non-negative. All exponential functions of the form a to the some power x, where a is positive, all trigonometric functions and the inverse functions of all the above functions. They are all continuous everywhere where they take finite values. If f and g are both continuous at x equals x0 and c is a real number, then the following functions are continuous at the same point, f of x plus g of x, c times f of x, f of x times g of x, and f of x divided by g of x, assuming that g does not take the value 0 at the point x0. Further, if f is continuous at x equals a and g continuous at the number f at a, then the composed function g composed with f, assuming that it is defined, is continuous at x equals a. The extreme value theorem for continuous functions states that a function which is continuous on a closed interval takes its maximum and minimum values on that interval. So here we have a graph of a continuous function f, the green curve. Function f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and actually it even extends beyond the interval from a to b, but we don't care about that. The extreme value theorem says that the function f takes its maximum and minimum values on the closed interval from a to b. So among all values of f on the closed interval from a to b, there is one or more which are larger than the others. So here we have two local maximum points, namely points c and d. At c, the function takes a value which is larger than any value that the function takes near that point c, and the same is true for d. But the value of the function at the point d is larger than that at the point c, therefore d is the global maximum of this function over the interval from a to b. And then on this interval the function f also takes its minimum value, and that is taken at the point e. A function which is not continuous at some point, here we have a graph of a function f, which is not continuous at the point c, it does not necessarily attain its maximum value or minimum value on the interval from a to b. This particular function shown here does attain its minimum value, and it does that at the point c, the minimum value is zero. But as uh, x approaches the point c from the left, the values of the function grow arbitrarily large, and therefore the function has a left-hand limit, positive infinity, at x equals c, and uh, does not uh, have a largest value on the interval from a to b, because there are points where the value of the function f is arbitrarily large on that interval. This is now possible because the function f is not continuous. Bolzano's theorem states that if a function f is continuous on an interval from a to b, a less than b, and if the values of the function at the endpoints of this interval have different signs, this is expressed as saying that f at a times f at b is negative, then there is a point C between A and B such that F at C is zero. This theorem is illustrated by this picture. Here we have a continuous function whose value at A is negative and at B is positive. Therefore, it must take the value zero at some point between A and B. This point is now the point C. So this seems intuitively clear. A function, if it goes from being negative to being positive, it must cross the x-axis. And when it crosses the x-axis, then we have found our point C. 
Bernard Bolzano lived from 1781 to 1848. He was a Bohemian mathematician, logician, philosopher and a priest. He was a professor at the University of Prague and he initiated this very rigorous treatment of analysis. It was continued by Karl Weierstrass a little bit later, so when Bolzano was finishing his mathematical work, Weierstrass was starting it. And um, he is credited as being the father of modern analysis. He was professor at the Technical University of Berlin. He lived from 1815 to 1897. This discussion that we have presented regarding continuous functions and limits is largely based on the work of Weierstrass. Bolzano's theorem states that a continuous function cannot pass from being negative to positive without taking the value zero in between. A discontinuous function, as the one shown here in the picture on the right, may do just that. It first takes negative values and then it may jump to positive values without actually crossing the x-axis. So this is the essence of continuity here. A continuous function cannot do that. The intermediate value theorem is a slight generalization of Bolzano's theorem. We assume that f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, and that t is a number between f at a and f at b. Then there is a number c between a and b such that f at c equals t. This is an easy consequence of Bolzano's theorem. We simply apply Bolzano's theorem to the function f at fx minus t. So that uh, if um, f at a is less than f at b, then fx minus t is negative at x equals a and positive at x equals b. Therefore, we may apply Bolzano's theorem to this function and uh, that yields immediately the existence of this point C, where f at c minus t equals zero, that is f at c equals t. So this is immediate consequence of Bolzano's theorem. We may view this graphically, so here we have our function f, and it takes uh, some value f at a at the point a, and some other value f at b at the point b. In this case, f at b is larger than f at a. Now, if we give a value t in between f at a and f at b, then we may find the point c simply by drawing the horizontal line and looking at where it intersects the graph of the function. Now, it intersects the graph of the function at several points. We may choose any of these to be our point c and I have chosen now the middle one. So this point C has the property that f at C equals T. The validity of Bolzano's theorem and that of the extreme value theorem lies on the completeness of the set of real numbers. The completeness axiom of the set of real numbers states that Every bounded non-empty set of real numbers has always the smallest upper bound and the largest lower bound. For example, the set of rational numbers does not have this property. And if we consider the function f of x equals x squared minus 2, then its value at x equals 0 is negative 2, its value at x equals 2 is positive 2, but that function x squared minus 2 does not take the value 0 at any rational point, but it does take the value 0 at an irrational point, which is, of course, a square root of 2. So this completeness of the set of real numbers is the key. 
and uh, that is an axiom. We assume that real numbers satisfy this. Every bounded non-empty set of real numbers has always the smallest upper bound and the largest lower bound. The intermediate value theorem is useful when we have to figure out whether certain complicated equations have solutions or not. In this problem we have to show that the equation cosine of x equals 2 times x has a solution. We cannot solve this equation directly, we do not have a formula for that. But um, the first thing to do is to figure out whether it has solutions or not. And in order to do that we consider the function f of x which equals cosine of x minus 2 times x. Now clearly if the equation cosine of x equals 2 times x has a solution then at that solution point the function f takes a value 0. And vice versa if we have found a value x at which f of x equals 0 then that value satisfies cosine of x equals 2 times x. Therefore showing that the equation cosine of x equals 2 times x has a solution is equivalent to showing that the function cosine of x minus 2 times x takes the value 0. So we are considering this function and we observe that its value at the point 0 is cosine at 0 minus 2 times 0 cosine at 0 is 1 and 2 times 0 is 0 so the value of the function f at 0 is 1. The value of the function f at the point x equals 1 is cosine at 1 minus 2. Now cosine at 1 is um, a number which is less than 1 so cosine of 1 minus 2 is certainly negative. Therefore we conclude that the function f takes a positive value at 0 and a negative value at 1 and the function f is further continuous therefore by the intermediate value theorem we conclude that there is a number c between 0 and 1 such that the function f takes a value 0 at the point c. Therefore this equation cosine of x equals 2 times x does have solutions and we further know by this argument that the solution lies between 0 and 1. We might continue this reasoning. Now we know that there is a solution between 0 and 1. Then next we would compute the value of the function f at the point 1 half. And now depending whether the value is negative or positive, the solution c lies either on the interval from 0 to 1 half or from 1 half to 1 and so on. We may repeat this argument many times and get actually an approximation for the value of this solution. But for the moment we are happy with simply knowing that a solution exists. To summarize we have now presented two important properties of continuous functions. The first one is the extreme value theorem. A function which is continuous on a closed interval takes its maximum and minimum values on that interval. The second important property is the intermediate value theorem. A continuous function takes any value between any two of its values. Both of these results are very deep and require serious analysis along the lines of Bolzano and Weierstrass.